Welcome to Watercoloring with the Mint Gardener, which is me, yours truly, Sarah Simon. Um, I'm really excited to watercolor this piece with you guys today. It's a really simple, easy to follow, and relaxing, really mindful watercolor piece. And we're going to be using a bunch of beautiful Sakura Koi products. So here is kind of just a little picture of what we're going to be working with today. You see the Sakura Koi watercolors, um, a nice Han Mule uh, set of paper. You've got your Sakura Micron pen, which is wonderful because their ink is waterproof, so it's really easy to paint on. And then a round four Princeton brush. And you just need some water and maybe a little paper towel to mop up any mistakes, and you are ready to go. So let's dive in. Okay, here we are looking through all of the fun materials. Again, that's a nice little Han Mule pad of paper. Watercolor paper just needs to be marked for watercolor, so you wanna be using 140 pound weight or above, and that's just because the paint will just move so much more beautifully on that type of paper. Here you see I am actually dabbing out each of the colors of my Sakura Koi kit. Something that is really fun and something I truly enjoy is mixing colors. And it is quite amazing how many color recipes you can make by just combining a simple 12 set kit. So we're gonna play with that as we go. Um, you see I've got my Micron pen and I'm just gonna start uh, with pen and I add paint later. So I'm making leaf shapes sporadically around the page. Notice that my pen, I'm making C shapes. So if you were to be drawing in the alphabet, uh, you would be making kind of that little curved C shape to emulate a branch or uh, a nice leaf that you would see in nature. So I'm just kind of working around my page, adding C shapes. Uh, notice that I start at the top of my line and I pull down. Uh, when you're working with any type of drawing utensil, any type of pen or ink, it's always best if you pull down towards yourself. Here I've sped things up so you don't have to watch me fill the entire page, but I would encourage you to just take your time, draw as many leaves as you'd like. Um, just the act of drawing, uh, especially a repeated motion, is a very mindful process it gets your brain engaged in your creative um, just being starting moving and you can really start thinking about just relaxing and painting and making the simple shapes of a line so we're gonna get all those done and now we're gonna mix up our first mix so like I mentioned in just 12 paintings um, in just 12 paint tubes you can really make some beautiful mixes this one mix in particular is what I like to call buff and it's a mixture of yellow ochre and white and here you see me I'm swatching it out on a nice piece of paper to make sure that's the color I want um, and I'm gonna write down yellow ochre and white I always encourage people to write down their recipes because you think you'll remember but oftentimes you want to get back to that one color you mix so beautifully and it's really nice to have a reference swatch guide. So here we are, we're making sure that there is movement and shine on the palette. With watercolor, you're actually painting with about 80% water and 20% of that paint mixture. So you know I added water to activate the paints and get them chatting in order to mix up that nice buff color. And then what I'm doing is I'm using my paintbrush to go to the water jar and really animate the water on the palette first. That's where the magic of watercolor begins. Then I use my paintbrush to grab that magic watercolor mixture and bring it over to my paper. All right, we're ready for our next color. We're gonna mix up a nice color I like to call blush, where I'm using the Sakura uh, Carmine Yellow Ochre and white. You notice I pull bits of the actual tube paint away from the concentrated mixture of paint and then I use water to create that movement and shine and I paint out of the movement and shine. I've got a nice little seashell ready for holding my paintbrush rest. I feel like that's my favorite thing to use as my paintbrush rest. It's just the right shape and it reminds me of the ocean which I always love spending time at. So again, I'm writing down my recipe. I've got nice movement and shine on my palette and we're gonna go ahead and add this mixture 
this blush mixture of leaves. Again, here we go. I'm adding water to make sure that there's about 80% water, 20% paint on my palette. And here I'm adding leaves. Now, that nice watercolor wash that you added in the buff leaves is dry. Watercolor dries quickly, especially when it's put on your paper at such a thin um, layer that we're doing. So feel free to overlap. The, and the other thing that's really beautiful about this piece is that you can move outside the lines. Since the ink, the Sakura Microns, are waterproof, you can actually paint right over them, you can paint within them, you can paint around them, and they aren't going to bleed. So there's freedom in this piece because the botanical line is already there, the structure's there, and you just get to add color and have fun. Now we're gonna mix our third color, and I like to call this Monstera Green. So I've taken a little bit of Viridian, Prussian Blue, and Black, the Ivory Black. Right here you can see, I'm testing it out. Viridian and Prussian Blue felt a little too aqua, teal. And so I was like, hmm, let's add a little bit of that Ivory Black to get that richer, deeper color that really makes such a lovely shade. So we've made a nice little leaf color and I'm going to again swatch it out by just creating a nice wash on my watercolor paper, making sure that it's a true color. So I've got that color. You can see it's bleeding and moving within that nice wash that I've created, which is it, it's an indication that you're using just the right amount of water. When your paint moves within that wash, and you're gonna write all those recipes down so that you can recreate them. And notice, yeah, there's 12 basic colors in this kit, but the amount of recipe cooking that you can make with all these ingredients is pretty amazing. Color tends to be like a very personal choice. So colors that resonate with people change based on your mood, based on your experience, and just your time in life. So it's really fun to be able to learn to play with color and to experiment. And by using a really big tray like I am right here mixing, I'm able to grab little dabs of the concentrated color right from the paint tube and then mix it up and keep playing, right? Keep swatching. Here, we always are reanimating. Notice I'm adding water back to that palette because the magic really starts on the palette with watercolor. If you've got the right mixture on your palette, the work to watercolor is very simple. Um, so it always begins on the palette. So here I am just making nice little leaf shapes using my brush and we've got a nice full piece that's really lovely. I can't wait to see how you create your own movement and shine and leaf piece.